In a recent video, I covered some superhuman senses that animals have, and in it I talked about the fairly well-known fact that dogs can actually smell some kinds of cancers. So now you have a whole new anxiety when a dog sniffs your crotch. You're welcome. The problem is that dogs can't talk, so it's kind of hard to figure out exactly what chemicals they're smelling. And even the most accurate dogs are only in maybe the 80% range. But imagine if a person had that same ability, and could talk, and could help discern exactly what chemicals they're smelling. That's exactly what happened in the case of Joy Milne. And thanks to her super smeller, we could be on the verge of a whole new era of diagnostics that could save millions of lives. Joey Milne is a retired nurse from Perth, Australia, who's had kind of a superpower her whole life. And she had no idea. Joey has something called hyperosmia, basically a superhuman sense of smell. Her nose has more olfactory receptors than the rest of us. Which kind of makes me think of tetrachromacy, uh, where some people are born with four types of cones in their retinas instead of three, so they actually have the ability to see some colors a little more clearly than the rest of us. So I guess you could say that Joey could smell some colors that the rest of us couldn't smell. Speaking of eye stuff, I forgot to take my glasses off this time. You know, I'll just leave them on, whatever. It actually looks more like my logo, doesn't it? My logo, which you can find in the store in sticker form and with patches, got a new patch and keychains even. Look at the keychain with my face on it and, and a pin. It's all available at the store. I'm just saying if you want to put something on your Christmas list, it's just something, I'm just, just putting that out there. Shameless plug. Anyway, Joy could smell better than the rest of us, and this is something that she never really thought about. You know, I mean, we all just kind of assume that others perceive the world around us the same way we do. Which is why it probably drove her crazy about 10 years into her marriage when she started to notice a smell coming off her husband. His name was Les, he was a doctor, and yeah, she kind of started noticing a musky, yeasty smell coming off of him. And she just assumed it was something from work. Of course, he couldn't smell it, which isn't unusual. We all kind of go nose blind to our own smells, but to her it was just pungent, like, especially on his neck and upper back. So she started telling him that he needs to wash himself better, and he did his best to oblige her, but she kept complaining about it. I can only imagine the kind of fun little arguments this created. Marriage. But she eventually learned to live with it and just tried to let it go, because, you know, it was probably driving him crazy. And besides, nobody else could smell it, so... What can you do? But a few years after that, she started to notice that his personality started to change. Or, as she said to NPR in 2020, he was a lot more moody. He wasn't as tolerant. They began to fight more. Um, all the good qualities that she admired in him, his patience and his thoughtfulness, they started slipping away. And by his early 40s, she started to see her husband as a completely different person. And then one night, she woke up to Les attacking her in his sleep. As she told NPR, he was sort of screaming and shaking me, but he was totally oblivious of it. He was clearly just having a nightmare, but this was the breaking point. I'm sure getting attacked in the middle of the night could do that. So Joy demanded that he visit a doctor. She was actually afraid that he might have a brain tumor or something. The good news, he didn't have a brain tumor. The bad news, he had Parkinson's. So most of us know Parkinson's disease is a brain disorder that can cause uncontrollable or uh, unintended movements like shaking, stiffness, difficulty with balance and coordination, that kind of thing. But people with Parkinson's can also develop behavioral and mental changes, depression and memory problems. And this was the case for Les. The disease occurs when nerve cells in the basal ganglia are damaged or die, but scientists still don't know exactly what causes it. So Joy and Les made the best of things over the next 20 years, but as his condition deteriorated, it definitely put more of a strain on their marriage. So they eventually decided to join a Parkinson's support group. So they show up to this meeting. Um, they actually got there a little bit late, but when Joy walked in the room, a wave of that familiar scent came over her. It took her a minute to realize that that smell was coming from the other people in the room. As Joy told NPR, quote, and then I realized that for some people it smelled stronger and for other people it didn't smell so strong. She realized that maybe this thing that she'd been smelling this whole time was Parkinson's disease. And she'd been smelling it way before Les showed any symptoms. Both being healthcare workers, she and Les realized the implications of this because if you could start treating Parkinson's disease before the nerve damage starts, you could save a ton of lives. This was an amazing revelation, but what exactly do you do with that? Well, Joy reached out to a Parkinson's researcher at the University of Edinburgh named Tilo Kunath. And his initial reaction was uh, pretty much exactly what you think. Wow, that is weird. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, sorry, I hate to cut this short, but I got somebody on the other line that can hear diabetes. So, uh, yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll thank you for calling. Okay, all right, bye-bye then. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Needless to say, it sounded a little crackpot to him, but he started thinking about it, and he remembered that there was that research that I was talking about at the beginning of this video about dogs that can smell cancer. So 
he figured it couldn't hurt to take a look. So he decided to meet with her and do a little experiment. What he did was he took two different groups of people, one group that had Parkinson's and one that didn't, and he had them wear a white t-shirt for a night and then seal them in a box. And then he had Joy smell the shirts to see if she could tell which ones had Parkinson's and which ones didn't. And the results were pretty mind-blowing. She got all of them right except for one. She had a false positive. She thought somebody had Parkinson's who didn't. But still, like 95, 98% accurate? That's crazy. Except that wasn't actually true. Because a few months later, that guy, that false positive guy, was diagnosed with Parkinson's. She smelled it before he had any symptoms, before any medical test showed it. Joy Milne was 100% accurate. Literally more accurate than established diagnostic tests. So yeah, Dr. Knath was on board at this point. He was sold, so he started to work with Joy on this, but unfortunately, this was about the time that Les's health started to go downhill. Les passed away in 2015, but before he died, he made Joy promise to continue researching and try to find a way to help other people with this. Joy and Dr. Knath published their findings in ACS Central Science in March of 2019. This spawned a lot of articles, got a lot of attention, and specifically got the attention of a researcher named Perdita Barron. Barron is a researcher from the University of Manchester Department of Chemistry. She wanted to see if they could actually figure out what exact chemicals it was that Joy was smelling. So she and Joy started working together and they found that there were several chemicals in the sebum, which is a kind of an oily discharge that we all have in our skin. The sebum is often overproduced in people with Parkinson's disease. And the research showed elevated levels of compounds like eocasane, hippuric acid, and octadecanol. Sure, I didn't say any of those right. But using that info, Joey and a team of scientists from the University of Manchester developed a new skin swab test. It basically works by swabbing the back of a person's neck and upper back to collect the sebum and then a mass spectrometer analyzes it. And yes, it can detect Parkinson's disease with 95% accuracy in lab conditions. The scientists sampled 79 people who had the disease and 71 healthy people. And they identified 500 compounds that were different between people with Parkinson's and those without it. Barron told the whole Daily Mail, quote, What we're now doing is seeing if hospital laboratories can do what we've done in a research lab in a hospital lab. Once that's happened, we want to see if we can make a confirmatory diagnostic that can be used along with the referral process from a GP to a consultant. The testing's still in the early stages, there's still a lot of work to be done, but Joy's also working with other scientists around the world to see if maybe there are other diseases she can smell, like cancer and tuberculosis. By the way, Joy describes her gift, her gift of smell, as both a gift and a curse, um, because as you can imagine, perfumes and candles can be kind of overwhelming to her, but there's also some ethics concerns. Because sometimes when she's walking down the street or shopping at a supermarket or something, she'll walk past somebody and she can smell Parkinson's on them. So like, what do you do in that situation? Do you, do you say something? How would that go? Oh, excuse me, ma'am, could you hand me that box of corn pops? Oh, thank you so much. That's very nice of you. Oh, you may have an undiagnosed terminal illness. Okay, bye. Like, seriously, what are you supposed to do? Well, Joy consulted with some medical ethicists and the consensus seems to be that she probably shouldn't say anything. For now, anyway. Because the research is still new, it's not really been proven in, you know, laboratory settings and whatnot. And there's also some privacy issues involved. And besides, what are they supposed to do? Go to their doctor and demand a test because some random person at the supermarket told them they smell like Parkinson's? But maybe in the future that'll change. Maybe in the future the smell test will pass the smell test. Because, I mean, we've known for a long time that different diseases have different smells. The ancient Indian medical text Sashruta Samhita even includes the line, quote, by the sense of smell, we can recognize the particular perspiration of many diseases, which has an important bearing on their identification. In Chinese medicine, there's a practice called listening and smelling, or auscultation and olfaction. They basically assign sounds and smells to the different organs in the body, and changes in those smells could indicate problems in those organs. The same is true to a lesser extent in Western medicine. Smells have always been a diagnostic tool. For example, if a patient had a fruity aroma of decomposing apples, an experienced diagnostician would know that they probably have diabetic ketosis. Back in the day, the smell of baked bread coming off a person was a sign of typhoid fever. Hyperaminoacidemia is known to smell like dried malt or hops, and scrofula smells like stale beer. And yellow fever apparently smells like a butcher shop, so <laughs> good luck getting a date when you smell like that. Oh, and you know, the yellow fever, yeah, yeah, good luck with that. Now at this point you might be asking me, why Joe, why exactly do these diseases smell this way? To which I would reply by saying, why are you talking like that? To put it simply, our bodies are basically just chemical factories, and diseases alter those factories and the chemicals it creates. For example, a pathogen might alter the level or types of microbes which expirate different chemicals that we can pick up through smell. Or the activation of our immune system could change the excretion of metabolic byproducts from our hormonal system. And there is actually one smell test that has made its way into a clinic. It's a test for asthma. 
So when the airways in our lungs get infected, they release nitric oxide in a person's breath, and those levels are higher with people with asthma. Well, after decades of development, the FDA just approved a handheld device that doctors now use to make a diagnosis for asthma. But this is just a cool first step. They're actually now working on similar technology for personal use that can actually let you monitor medication effects and even advance warnings of asthma attacks. It could even connect to a mobile phone and you could pull up an app that reports on your nitric oxide levels. As Reed Dweck, a physician and professor at the Cleveland Clinic, told Scientific American in 2016, quote, your phone would become the device. That's the future. So it's totally possible that in the not too distant future, you could take a scent sample as part of your yearly physical exam. And that sample could then be analyzed to find everything from Parkinson's to cancer, Alzheimer's, heart disease, you name it. And with those early warnings, you could start treating and fending off the disease long before they actually become a problem. And along with that, devices that work on your phone could give you early warnings of problems in your daily life. It really could be the beginning of a whole new way to see disease, far earlier than our eyes could detect. And it's all because of one woman and her superhuman sense of smell. Really cool stuff. The human body is capable of some really weird things. Which is why I did a six-part series called Mysteries of the Human Body, which you can see over on Nebula. I didn't talk about Joy Milne in that series, but it totally would have fit in there. I did talk about people like the Elephant Man, the Tree Man of Java, Robert Wadlow, the tallest man in history, uh, Lucia Zarate, the smallest woman in history, and many others in the Human Oddities episode. Other episodes include the weirdest plagues of all time, diseases we can't seem to cure, and I dedicated a whole episode to the mystery of aging. It's a fun series. We actually built a whole new set for it. Uh, I had some, some special graphics and whatnot. I know, I promoted this for a while, but I'm still proud of it. I think it came out well. And if that's not your thing, you've got a little bit of a darker tint to you, well, I've got an ongoing series on forgotten atrocities throughout history called Forgotten Atrocities. There's a few episodes of that out already. Uh, the most recent one was about the Irish famine. And those are just my exclusive projects. There are also Nebula Originals from Real Engineering, Wendover Productions, Real Life Lore, and many others of your favorite educational YouTubers. And you can watch all of them and their regular YouTube videos ad-free and earlier than everybody else. Nebula is a place that we all built together so we can have a curated platform outside the confines of, you know, the YouTube algorithm and whatnot. And if you like my kind of content and you haven't checked it out, you really ought to do so. There's a lot of really great stuff on there. And the best way to do that is to get it for free with a subscription to CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is the best streaming service in the world for documentary programming on pretty much any subject you can possibly be interested in. Science, history, art, food, you name it, it's all there. And if you go to curiositystream.com slash Joe Scott, you'll get the Nebula Bundle, which will give you both streaming services for 26% off for a grand total of $14.79 for an entire year. Two streaming services. It's bonkers. You'll be getting a whole year of two different amazing streaming services for smart, nerdy content for less than the cost of one movie ticket. And you'll be supporting some worthy creators in the process, so it's a win-win. So again, it's curiositystream.com slash Joe Scott. Please go check it out. Uh, link's down in the description. Big thanks to CuriosityStream for supporting this video and a huge shout out to the Answer Files on Patreon and the channel members who are forming an awesome community, helping to keep the lights on, just being great pieces of feedback and whatnot. I gotta shout out some new people real quick. We've got JP, Miss B, didn't mean to rhyme, but there it is, Wesley, Tremaine Ryan, Pat Milia, Kaylee Livingston, and John. Just a handful today. Thank you guys so much. If you would like to join them, uh, get early access to videos, get to join some exclusive live streams, and get a little button by your name that makes you stand out in the comments, uh, just hit the join button down below this video. Please do like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, um, maybe check out this video. It was about the uh, toxic lady, another weird medical mystery. Uh, did pretty well. People seem to enjoy it. But you can go check that out or check out any of the videos down here on the side that have my face on them that you can see right there. Uh, if you like them, I do invite you to subscribe. I come back with videos every Monday. And that's it for now. You guys go out there, have an eye-opening rest of the week. Stay safe, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.